You look like you're I, praying. You look I, like you're praying. I'm like trying, God, give me the. I'm intro. trying to think of how to word. I I know how I want to intro it. I just I'm trying to think of how to word it. God, please give me the intro that I look for. <laughs> <laughs> In the name of the Father, Son. please. In the name of the Son, Father, Son, and the Holy Podcasters. <laughs> All podcasters, present and past, <laughs> give me your strength. Intercede <laughs> for me, like Ray from the end of Star Wars. Be with me. <laughs> Be yeah. with me. What's your name? Ryan. Ryan, who? Ryan. I was hoping you'd do something like Ryan Podcaster. Ryan Podcaster. <laughs> since, since we're praying for the intervention of all the uh, of all the podcasters. Bring balance, Matt. Bring yeah. balance to the podcast. I was going to do something like I did. <laughs> uh, in a world where, or uh, I need to do, <clears throat> in a world where biting off your husband's finger gets him fired. What? Wasn't that what happened? <laughs> or she cut off his finger? What? Uh, Johnny Depp? No, she already. Yeah, she did. What? I don't believe you. And wasn't that like one of the major things? Is that. Did Amber <laughs> Amber Heard cut off Johnny Depp finger? This could be da- a dangerous search. Yeah, Johnny Depp accuses Amber Heard of severing fingertip. You didn't know that? Oh, he even has a he even has a scar. I yeah. didn't know. Oh wow. <laughs> All right, let me try this again. Okay. <clears throat> In a world. We're cutting off your... I thought I heard something. I'm not doing this anymore. Oh, is, someone, is it a dog barking? Yeah, there's a dog barking. We're recording in Ryan's apartment, and he has more neighbors than I did. Um, I'm not doing that anymore, but you know, that's, you know, you can just picture that in a world voice. I don't do it very well. But in a world. In a world. <laughs> in a world. In a world. <laughs> in a world. <laughs> oh, boy, in a world. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Mouse did trailers. <laughs> all right. Uh, That's a surprise tool we're going to use later. I can't do Mickey Mouse at all. You can't. I can't. I, don't, I can do Stitch really well. I don't know. But if, everyone can do Stitch. I don't know if I can do any voices because you know how like your voice sounds different to you than yeah. it does to other people. So like I could think, like I I can think that I'm doing a really good job at singing and all that. But yeah. what's happening? Is it doesn't sound even close. Yep. And everyone gets real confused. They're like, I don't know who you're trying to play, man. Like, it's bad impressions. Yeah. So, how do I wonder how, like, people who know how to sing or people who sing or people who do impressions, like, how do they know? When do they know they've got the impression on? People who sing or have the have a mic in there or have a speak or a thing in their ear, they're hearing themselves. Well, when people develop impressions, like, how do you know? Like at what? How can you tell if your impression's good? You have it just to, takes time. Do people just tell you, like, "Hey, you're that's a really good impression." So then you just mark that down. Like, I got that one on the. Like, <laughs> Maybe that one worked. Yeah, put that in the note. I've heard that some like people who do a lot of impressions and it's like their job have in the past been known to kind of forget what their normal voice sounds like because they spend so much time doing other voices. The guy that plays. Uh, 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 the the yellow dog from Adventure Time, he has played so many characters, but he has he played Bender on Futurama. Yeah, uh, he said he doesn't. Rem- he has said that before that he doesn't remember if it's his voice or not. Mm-hmm. Like he thinks that his voice, like to the point that he's tried to change his voice to like give Bender sound different than like Marcus Phoenix. He's just like I don't know for some reason they just sound the same. <laughs> like I, it's like if anything, it just sounds like all I did was gargle, yeah, like metal to do one person's voice, and it's but it still sounds like. I mean, that's the thing is that like, like you can't you can't really change your voice that much, and so especially if you're used to your own voice, and you you know how it sounds all the time for yeah. the most part. You might not think a voice you're doing is that different, but it's different enough. I think I'm going to work on making doing impressions. Do it. I think I'm going to work to find out. What's well, what, going to be your first one? I need to figure out what my talent is first. What's your talent? What, watched, what talent do you think I it is? I watched a very inspirational Joe Rogan where he had an old one from Dr. Phil. And Dr. Yeah. Phil, being who he is, said on it, they, they got into discussion that uh, we the world wants us all to treat everyone at, at, like at, that they're on an equal playing field. Like, yeah. But that's not possible. Like, 
it's impossible for us all to be playing on equal on an equal playing field of everything. Not yeah. everything can be equal, and not everybody can be equal. That's not in like a a race type of way or something like that. It means like like they even like they said if someone was to like if you decide you don't want to do something or be the best at something, someone will gladly take your step up, take your place, and. That all comes, I guess, ba- like the idea is based on the fact that, like, some things, like, we have, like, some talents that you have and I, like, you and I have may be different. Yeah. Like, you don't know what those talents are. Like, I cannot be as good. Shooters, for example, like, shooters, you've built the skill because of practice playing, like, first person shooters. I didn't. So I'm terrible at first person shooters. Yeah. But you're. Very good. I'm at a them. god. Well, some okay, would say. Okay. So you say you're a god. <laughs> There's a lot of people better than me. Okay, but uh, but the thing is, like, you're at a, at a higher. That's you. So maybe it. Maybe that was just your 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 talent. Mm-hmm. And I don't have that talent. And some of it can be poor. Like any talent can be created. Yeah. For, with practice, but there's a poor. There's a level where I can't go any higher. So. It, and never, never any scenario where me and you are going at first person shooters will I ever come out on top. Very rarely, so we will never be on equal <laughs> playing field. Because even if I try right now to practice and get up to your level, you're also still playing. So yeah. your skill level keeps going and will never be equal. Enough. Well, I mean, kind of. There is a point, like I mean, specifically that example, where in this situation, you you're pl- we're playing the shooter just over and over, just you, me and you scrimming the whole time. There's a certain point where I'm not going to learn anything new. Whereas you are, you're gonna learn stuff from me, but mm-hmm. it doesn't work in reverse because if you're a less skilled player than I am, yeah, I don't, I can't learn anything by playing against you, mm-hmm. and so, but you can learn from me, and you, so on a long enough timeline, you end, you'll end up equaling me. I mean, maybe, maybe I don't. And know. that's it's a weird single example, but that's how I got better, which is finding better and better people to play well, against. Well, I digress. Like the the point that Phil, Doctor, obviously they're more eloquent at telling yeah. and talking about stuff like that but uh, we never said the name of the show we're almost 10 minutes in already are we <laughs> we're like five minutes welcome in. to pop culture unboxing <laughs> welcome to pop culture unboxing or at this point what pop culture i don't even know philosophies where, yeah, 101 I don't, even, I don't even know where the show intro because it's like i don't know keep it whatever <laughs> yeah well, I, I we're cutting in somewhere in there hey guys i'm matt i'm ryan yeah and you should been, keep the whole 10 minutes like well, well, gonna, most of it's going to be in here. I say keep all yeah. that because that's they're they, going to enjoy all of this. Good. What if that? What if like you're listening right now and you, that's the first thing you hear is Ryan saying, "No, just keep the first ten minutes." That would be funny. That yeah. would actually be really funny. But I like our conversation <laughs> because so you because of me saying like, "Hey, do you promise to keep it in?" You'd be like, "Yeah, I promise to keep it in." <laughs> as you're already putting the scissors out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's we'll uh, press C now. I guess we should talk about stuff. I didn't write. I mean, there's no. I mean, there's a lot. We're going in a good on. conversation now, though. Yeah. There's, um, about following your dreams and being a talent or something. Yeah, I want. I guess I want. I wonder what the talent that I have, or that maybe even you have, that is like a talent that you'll always be on the st- a step above everyone else, and no one will ever catch up. Because I, I wonder if I, I do. But here's the problem: is like there's a lot of talents. So like if we could, one of us could have like a super depressing one. Like maybe we're just one of us is just better at vacuuming than anyone else. <laughs> Yeah, is that uh, we just wow. we have a system for it, and it and then what's great about that's that talent is Robin's it translates talent. to like mowing the lawn. That's definitely it, Robin's talent. Is good at mowing. No, like or, she is way like the. Apparently, I can't vacuum our house right. Like, <laughs> that, so I was I was hoping that she'd like pop out the door, being like, uh you know, <laughs> yell at me or something. But um, um, yeah, I uh, I guess well. Also, I do kind of subscribe to the idea that there are just some people that were just created that are their their right to be here was to be nothing but like the lower end, so that the hot so pe- like basically be the steps to help other people achieve better things. Yeah, like they have no t- they have no talent and they're not supposed to make it farther in life. It's like there's a point where it's like, all right, you were dev- designed to help other people be look good. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Can I complain about something real quick? I don't know if that that sounds really. All right, maybe we should cut all that. That doesn't sound good. Maybe, sounds, can I complain about something? Can I complain about something? What? Uh, GameStop has resent an email to me thirteen times over the last twelve hours, 
telling me uh, you're we are working on your order, and we will send you an update when it is shipped. But here's the problem: you is already it, have it. <laughs> is, yeah, it's I, at the so, house. so for context for the listeners, I ordered the um, new Destiny expansion just came out, and I ordered the um, the version of it that came with a statue of the stranger who's a character in the game. Um, the statue came a lot earlier. Like the statue came, I think, back in uh, August or September. Yeah. Um, and so all I have left to receive from them is a is the digital code for the game, um, which I had already bought on Steam. So now I'm going to have an extra copy of it. But as part of this, apparently they've they've uh, deemed it necessary to email me. Uh, it seems like every hour for the last twelve hours. Hmm. I got. Oh no, it's worse than that. I got um, so just today I got one at eight thirty four a.m. One at eight thirty four a.m. One at eight forty six a.m. One at eight forty nine a.m. One at nine nineteen. One at two thirty four. Another at two thirty four, and a third at two thirty four. So GameStop, I don't know what you're doing, but you gotta fix it. I don't think they know what they're doing. GameStop, have you ever used their website before? Not really. No. Oh my man, they the are. Last time I pre-ordered treat. something at GameStop was when you were with me no i bought it when i was with you i didn't pre-order no you pre-ordered spyro when you're with me you're right and then or did, did i, I get it no i think you pre-ordered i it. pre-ordered it for you something like that yeah i pre-ordered it for you it's because i had a pro membership and you were going to get more you were you were saving money if i pre-ordered it for you i don't know how it worked out and then no no one ever picked it up <laughs> So then, <laughs> that pre-order might still be there. <laughs> that pretty, store shut down, though. It might still be there. We have to break in and check. So we check it, see if there's just one game, just guess one Spyro guess, game. Uh, it's an Indian restaurant now, so it would be really funny to walk in. That would be. And in the co- back of the Indian restaurant, this is the copy of Spyro. It just says <laughs> four Ryan. It's got all sorts of dust on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the last game I pre-ordered. Do you want to? Uh, it was ordered. Is that what ordered? <laughs> Less. Um, I'm trying to think of how to make this so that you could have a reasonable shot at guessing what game it was. It was a while back, and it was a major franchise. The la- so wait, this is the last game you last yeah, I pre-ordered th- from GameStop. Mm, I was gonna say God of War, but that's not. No, nope. I was there. Further. You bought God of War farther back. Oh boy, uh, not Destiny One. I know you didn't pre-order Destiny 1. Um, Halo. How about Halo 3? You're on the right track. Probably Halo 3 or 4. Nope. Halo 2? Nope. Halo 5? Nope. Halo Infinite? Nope. Oh, Halo Wars. Yep. Halo Wars. Yep, that was the the, the Steelbook. Yeah, because I owned Halo Wars the Steelbook too, and I like geeked out the fact that, because you were the only other person I've ever known that ever had Halo. Yeah. That game also let you... uh, Use voice commands to control your. Was Did it? it? Yeah, because no, there was another. No, that was a Tom Clancy game. But the, Halo Wars was cool because it was, I think, the re, the first real RTS on console. Yeah, well, and, the, oh, Halo Wars did let you use voice commands. I'm pretty sure. But, did it? Yeah, I don't. It's been so long since I played it. And that was the. I don't know if it was the last Halo game I played. It might have been. When did I it come out? Halo Wars. Yeah. Oh my in god. Re, in relation to the games, not year. It came oh. out. It came out after Reach, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was okay. right because Reach had come out, and then uh, no, ODST came out, then Reach, then Halo Wars. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'll be honest, ODST is still my favorite. Yeah. Like ODST yeah. is just such a good good game. Yeah, because it's uh, it's an interesting narrative. It is. It's an interesting and, narrative, and it's the first time the Covenant really feel dangerous because yeah. you're a human. You're not yeah, a super yeah. soldier yeah. with. Yeah. Shield. Well, no. Did the ODSTs have shields in that game? Yeah, but remember that you had. But they weren't like because at the time that was when your your shield your shield uh, came back. Yeah. You had to actually go to health packs. But which had which had not been a thing since Halo One. Yes. In Halo Two, it was the sh- it was the shield was your whole health, or you had shield and then hidden health. Yeah. And but then it if was, you recovered it, your shields, you got all your health back. Yes. Um. Boy, what a great game! That oh, I need. Sto- a, uh, I hey, did I tell you that I'm uh, probably gonna get the Master Chief Collection on PC I, at some point in the near future? I already future? have it on PC. I know you do. Um, I figured you would. I'm. You want to know a game that I'm thinking about getting back into? What that I, I sat. 
I've been like, no, I shouldn't. Wait, I'm going to say the game that if you haven't, you should be playing. And if not, you should be playing it. Hmm. Celeste. No. Oh, all right. I don't have it. All right, well, I don't understand. What did you just... What do you mean? Celeste. What is Celeste? Have you ever played it? No, I, I know what the game is, but yeah. are you asking me if I should? You're telling, you're telling me, me... I'm telling you you should play that. It's, okay. it's a phenomenal I game. I thought you were trying to guess what the game is I'm playing right I'm now. Kind so of, I, it was not... kind of a guess, kind of a just plug for a game I really no, like. No, you want to guess again? Wait, so what was it? You are you are picking it back up? Yes. Is it obvious to me? I don't know. It might be. It's not Destiny, right? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> it's, it's not Call of Duty. No. Okay. No. Um, Diablo. Oh, but you're on the right track. Close. Is it RuneScape? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> My brother is, too. He, uh, JP, who's been on the show before, he's geeking about... Uh, he wants to do like all the um, the quests and stuff like... Or what, are, what is the thing? The Well, so, I've, I, so actually, the, I'm kind of lying. There's the truth. There's RuneScape, but it's also World of Warcraft. I'm, I'm okay. I'm on World of Warcraft f- was going to be my other. I'm guess. on the fence of going to World of Warcraft or playing RuneScape. If you play RuneScape, you can play with him. He Runes- plays it all the time. It's it's out now on Steam. Yeah, yeah. RuneScape Classic, right? No, this is RuneScape new. No, he, Cla- I think he plays Classic, and then there's like a league or something for it. Yeah, I don't know how to play Classic. I haven't I yeah. haven't looked into it. That's what he plays. You should get in touch with him. And play it with him. I tried. He to wants get, more people. To play I tried with. to get back my old RuneScape account from <laughs> yeah. 2004. <laughs> Reminded me, did you remember Neopets, right? Yeah. Within like the last five years, I definitely tried to get back into my account that I had there as a kid, and oh, I was kind of, I was kind of, they they wiped the they they wiped accounts a couple years back. Oh like, man, like things that ones that had been inactive for more than a year or two got wiped. Oh, so you can't? I can't go back and no. That sucks. It does. That sucks. I love Neopets. Neopets was the best. I'm a child. But yeah, I've been thinking about that because like, well, Miles Morales comes out tomorrow, so I'm no, oh, it does stuck to that. There you go. But I'm I'm honored to that. But I've been thinking about getting well. Also, Wow, this month has a new expansion coming. Oh, out. does it? Yeah, I should probably. Wait. How long have we been talking? This is twenty minutes. Isn't we're it? we're getting close to twenty minutes. Yeah. Uh we should probably talk about this stuff that we'll get to it. People care about. We'll get not, to it. Okay. Video games are something people care about. I well, think. they're pop culture. I don't exactly. Care. I don't care what your dad says. They're pop yeah. culture. Yeah. Um. Whatever. But I've been thinking of. But it's uh called Shadowlands. What? Wow. Uh, World of Warcraft Shadowlands. I never played. I I looks, never. Full so, disclosure. Uh, I never played World of Warcraft. Well, the thing is, like games like that, I. See, this is where it comes down. Like, I can't play games like that unless I have a bunch of friends playing them. That's like, the thing. What happened, like, Destiny 2 was the only game so far I've been able to sit down and play. But then the problem has is I didn't have as much free time or want to play it as much as, like, everyone else did. So, like, yeah. I got behind while you guys kept going. And I was like... They've I, improved that a lot. I don't want to catch up. <laughs> they really... And this will be a plug for Destiny because I just can't help myself. Uh, they released their new new player experience... This ex- with this expansion that came out on Tuesday this week, November tenth, mm-hmm. um, and it's a lot better than it used to be. Like it actually takes you in and teaches you everything, and it says, you know, here's how you do this, and here's how you do this. Here's what here's all these things in the menu, and it doesn't unlock things until you've learned it. So like you're not just hit with a ton of quests and everything like that. Mm. It, it shows you how to do everything, so it's a lot more beginner friendly, and they start you at a more comfortable. Like they don't start you at zero anymore. Mm-hmm. They start you at 1050 right now, 1050 uh, level, and then the max is 1260 right now. Oh wow! So they, you oh, don't yeah. really have to go far to no. get up to the max level. No, because that and that was a big thing that they've they've always focused on, or they've focused on recently, is like making it easier for you to get your friends into the game and have them playing with you sooner, rather than how it used to be a couple years ago, where if you got someone into it, they had to spend 20 hours just getting to the point where they can play with you. Yeah, I remember a lot of times being carried for a new character. When I got to, yep. when I jumped over to PC for the first time, when I, when I that was a nightmare. I had to yep. go back and replay all the stuff. And the thing is, like the story of Destiny's great, but once you play it, you don't want to play it again. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I didn't want to go through the whole story again. But um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I I also. At least where, where RuneScape is even still a thing for me is the fact that it's free. I don't know yeah. I mean, I think you're still limited a good bit, but 
you can at least get your feet wet. With World yeah. of Warcraft, you have to jump right in. Yeah. You have to start paying now. Yep. And also, it's kind of hard to, like, me and Blizzard still not, I'm still very hurt over <laughs> their handling of everything. What are the odds they actually do Diablo 4 well? I don't know, but I'm still going to play it. I, don't, I might. I've I'm heard still going to play it. I've heard that Diablo is the closest thing to scratching a Destiny itch that you can you can get. I, well, I I will play Diablo all the, no matter what. And I this is for someone like there's two games that Blizzard have made that I have no problem saying that I'm still a fan of, even though the environment's crap for them. <laughs> it's Diablo and uh, Overwatch. Yeah. I still like, I don't play Overwatch as much anymore, but I do love. I Overwatch. haven't played in forever, but. Like Diablo, I still like it's sitting there on yeah. my computer, and every so often, like my mouse hovers over it, and I can hear <laughs> the voice like "Come back." <laughs> yeah, because I think you know how like you said you had like a you have characters that you've leveled all the way in Destiny. Mm-hmm. I have actually leveled every class and every like I've leveled. I've played Diablo so much that I've played every class, and I've played that class twice with all the sexes, oh my God. Like male and female, just because I just. Well, the thing is, like, I would meet someone that wanted to play it, like mm-hmm. Drew or someone, and then I, w- I would never want to, like, I didn't want to carry them, so yeah. I wanted it to be a fun experience for everybody. So I would just start a new character, and be like, well, okay, let's spec, let's do this kind of a monk, let's yeah. see what that's about, or let's do this. Oh, is I it jumped. bad that like I'm playing the new Destiny expansion, but I kind of want to get finished with it so that I can go back and play more Destiny One with people? Yeah, like I've been playing a lot of Destiny One with a handful of people. It's a lot of fun to go back. It's like it's well, bringing me back to a simpler time. Well, yeah, because I I like I find going back and like playing WoW Classic is probably where I would want to go most because that was where I first experienced. Like it's fun to look at the well cuz you know cuz Destiny 2 is one of the few games that in its sequel improved on a lot of things. Yeah. And it's kind of fun to see like man this is so easy but wow man it's so hard oh it's, god it's, it's I, amazing i'll tell see. you right now what it what bugs me the most in destiny one what is it doesn't have uh gra- uh what, what's the term gra- uh clambering or uh what ter- what are they what's the term they use i don't know if you, you hit if you hit the edge of something you'll grab onto it and pull yourself auto up. grapple yeah the destiny one doesn't have it you either have to land right on top of what you're trying to jump on or you're not going to get there and it screwed me I up can't so imagine, much. I can't imagine a game not having. See, that's but one here's of, the thing that's is, one of those features that I can't imagine like, a game not having. Uh, what, 13, 14 years, or, oh my God, a decade and a half ago, sprinting was a brand new thing in the games. You know, the first, all three of the, the first three Halo games didn't have, neither, or for, first four didn't come into Reach. And even no. then, it was just a bonus yeah. ability. Yeah, no, uh, Reach was the first one to yeah. have, like, armor abilities and so in all the other three you you were walking the whole time you could jump about your height but that was it then you go into a game like destiny where it's there's a ton of verticality you all the classes have a way to get really high up the word galahorn was still enough to cause you to lose oh, yeah. your mind still give you like cringe a little bit mm-hmm. <laughs> galahorn yeah i love that it's... i did you never bought the the galahorn that was a GameStop, right no i can't believe you didn't I, I don't know why, but I can't believe that was the one collectible. I probably you- couldn't afford it back then. And now, and I wouldn't have bought it now because I'm very much back in the mode of like, what am I going to do with it? Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at it for a little while and then it's going to go in a box somewhere. Yeah. Because I don't have a that's place what, to really display it. I'm pretty sure that's what a lot of people wish I would say about every collectible I walk in this house with. Yeah. Probably, probably looks at me being like, so you're just going to look at that, huh? That's just going <laughs> to sit there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's oh, you're my putting thing. that on the shelf. How often are you going to stare at it when you walk in the door? Not very often. Okay, yep. that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. It's a cool thing to show your friends a couple times a year when they come by. Yeah, but I always like to believe that some friends look at the collectibles that I see on my wall or on my like shelves and be like, how much did you pay for that? And I'm like, oh, you know, like 150 bucks. It's like, oh. <laughs> and that's oh. about all you're going to so, get. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so you wasted that, huh? Yep. That's the thing. I think like every collector. Oh, so you get two of these. That's a whole TV. Okay. Yeah, like a collector, like a collector, like for collectors, we look at all of our stuff and we're like, "Wow, it's so pretty! It looks so nice! Look at the, like if it's an action figure, it's like look at the articulation. Look, yeah. he can kick his own butt! <laughs> it, the, wow, there's so many points <laughs> joints to a person outside. Is probably like that costs twenty bucks. Yeah, like that's gas. Yeah, to go get that toy. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's gas for a week and a half. I'm like, 
So I, I understand why people look at me and probably yeah. think like Ryan doesn't. Ryan's not an adult. <laughs> yeah. But, oh. I think the definition of adult is is changing these days. Also, well, I think the thing is I can't. I can't lock down on what I like to collect. <laughs> that's a problem. That's the thing is like, I love like now it's, it's, it's changed. Now I'm stuck on the Mandalorian stuff. Yeah. I've, I've lost interest in anything else, but anything Mandalorian wise. Yeah. So like if it's an act, like the black series Mandalorians, I'll get, I'll get that stuff. But yeah. I've, I've, I've died out, but we can talk about that. Yeah, Mandalorian had two episodes. Well, I wanted us every episode to review the Mandalorian. I know, we missed the first one. Well, I jumped on the idea of like should we should we review the Mandalorian or should we wait till the end or do like a half season, like halfway point point for the season review. We can just talk about things we liked from each episode and then at the end of the season. All right, episode discuss 1. Discuss what we Do you remember episode 1? It was the one uh, it was on Tatooine, right? It was kind of cool to see the Tusken Raiders being more humanized. Yep. It on it it retroactively makes episode two more tragic. Oh yeah, because now yeah, you know they're not animals. They're not savages. They, no, they are. Well, they're a hardened people mm-hmm. living in a an environment that is very actively trying to kill them at every set, at every twist. And well, turn. that's the thing is like they're just at war. They're people. They're like they're basically great examples. Like they're the Native Americans to the United States. Like to. Yeah. The American colonist, like yeah, that's what it is. It's like they... they're just savages because they're different. Yeah, which that and seems the, it was cool seeing a crate dragon. Yeah, finally gets it's crazy. How the last big, time I think we saw are. one of those was a skeleton in episode four. Yes, uh, which where I don't know why. Maybe I just I need to go back and watch again. But I feel like that skeleton was smaller than could have just been a younger dragon. Yeah, I but. That thing is huge. The great yeah. dragon is huge. I liked all the things. Like it kept, it would go underground. You would lose it. It would just pop up yeah. in a mountain and be like, "Oh, did that you, looks like a piece of the." Mountain. Did you catch what they did when they first started the fight with the great dragon? They uh, changed the aspect ratio. It went from four three to uh, sixteen by nine. I did not catch yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, it was such a cool to make the dra- make the great dragon seem bigger, and it worked. Like if you thought, oh, you thinking, oh man, that's so big. Yeah. I guarantee you it was almost entirely because they changed the aspect ratio on Probably. You. Yeah, I mean, oh, man. Uh, the scene... Also, very... I felt very bad for a lot of those Tusker Raiders because that one... Oh, yeah. The one at the beginning when they're trying to set the bait, he's yeah. running away. He's like, I'm going to be fine. And instead, it just goes for him. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're all of the all of the uh, Tusker Raiders' like, reactions are like, ah, yeah. oh, well, that's bad. So, wait. Okay, we... So, I think we discussed this... Uh, Back when Tomorrow Morrison was, uh, t- it was mentioned to be on the show, and you brought up Cobb Vanth. Yes. And from so, the, what do you think of him for the aftermath? Compared to perfect. how he's in the aftermath. Honestly, perfect. Yeah. I, well, it's perfect casting because the guy that played him, that uh, Timothy Elephant, yeah. Elephant, 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 um, he, like he he plays like a western cowboy so yeah. well. So when he showed up and was started acting like the sheriff, I was just like, yeah. He played a sheriff before in like yeah. a Fox show so, or an FX show. So like it it made <laughs> sense. And plus that guy, I love I like him as a person. Like his yeah. he seems like a pretty cool dude. Uh but I mean, I li- he was a cool dude in the show. It was just great. It was great casting. And I yeah. I I was like, that's cool. And I can't wait to see more of him. And honestly, He's definitely I, gonna come back. I like that um that uh Mando didn't like say, All right, no, you were you were cool, you can keep the armor. Like he stuck to his guns. That's well, yeah, like, because this belongs to my people. I also like the fact that Ka he he looked at it that way too, because he was like, Yeah, that like I get it, the armor is his people. Like he wants it. But I need this to defend my people. Yeah, like it, like yeah. It was a really good dynamic. Yeah. Uh but since it's if if you don't if no one who saw it that's Boba Fett's armor yeah and if you're wondering how it survived uh, Cobb bought it from Jawas who had it in the back of their shop uh, they found it outside of the the Sarlacc pit mm-hmm. and the Sarlacc was dead yeah right? and the Sarlacc was dead um and at the end there's a cool like of the two moons. Or two sons, the uh, twin shot, sons. A cool shot. But yeah, yeah, like a cool shot of the twin sons and Mando. And this driving is at the off. end of episode one of the Mandalorian. By yeah, the way. and he's riding episode off. One season two. He's riding off in a sand speeder with the, with the Boba Fett's armor attached to it. Yeah, he's riding back, and and the you think you see a Tuscan Raider, but it turns around. It's it's Boba Fett himself yeah. dressed and acting like a Tuscan Raider, 
which we're getting a Boa Fett show. So here's my theory. Boa Fett's going to come back and take Baby Yoda and give it back, give it to uh, Moff Gideon, and he's going to mm. take his armor back that way too. And okay. then that's how we're going to get the Boba Fett TV show. That would be cool. Like, Boba Fett's going to go on his own. Because the ship's there. Like, yeah. Ship's somewhere. If the Millennium Falcon can be just sitting in a junkyard. Wait, you mean the Slave 1? Yeah. If if the Slave 1, like... Yeah, I guess so. Because it would have been on Tatooine. It would have been... Yeah, we never saw it again after Episode 5. No, but, like, that's the thing. is like, if the Millennium Falcon can be in some junkyard yeah. and no one can notice it, of that... You could then you have to say the same for the Slave One. Yeah. Well, I wonder if the Slave One's a more unique ship. Like the Falcon, what was great about it was that it was a YT uh, cruiser. Yeah. And there's a billion of them. Yeah. But, uh, well, I don't know. Well, the fact that the Slave One is Boba Fett's like ship, and Boba Fett is known as one like the probably one of the greatest bounty hunters in yeah. all the galaxy. Uh, it would make sense that people would see a ship and be like, "That's Boba Fett's ship. I'm taking it. He's dead now." Yeah. So I would let, maybe we'll see like yeah. him take it back. I don't know, but um. But wait, everyone that knew he died, died. Yeah, because the only people that survived were the were, were the rebels on those two skiffs or whatever they were. Everyone else on the barge died, right? Yeah. So I, maybe people don't know he's dead. They just yeah. think he's just living. He, he's just vibing it. somewhere. Yeah. Um, Episode two. Episode two, that was what I expected it was going to be a filler episode. But it wasn't really. You and you're saying something I've seen a lot of other people say. They're not filler episodes. The whole show isn't meant to be this big long narrative I, like well, others. No, I don't I don't mean like in like a traditional filler episode, but it was a it like the the it was all to set up the world. It wasn't like there was a main it wasn't like what you it wasn't like a heavily high action scene. There wasn't a lot really going on except for tor- except towards the end. Yeah, and that was just basically to build up like, okay, where is the where is the New Republic right now? Yeah, and h- how are how are they handling ship random ships and stuff? Like, did yeah. they? So it it built up it built up more of a world, but it's not something that an ordinary person who just wants to watch watch this show is not looking for. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that was it was an episode to build up information for true. Fan, but that's what a lot of true these big fans and there are, are a lot more vignettes of like like the first. But episode, that's what I'm saying. It has those like, threads of the continuing series. Well, that's, right now, this is a season where people are talking about all the big things that they want to see. Yeah. So it, so I saw episode two. Episode two was not going to be like episode one, where it ends with Boba Fett. It show it brings in Cod Band. Like yeah. Someday we're gonna get Ahsoka. We're gonna get Sabine in this show. Uh. You know what I mean? So like, we. Is Sabine everyone, confirmed? Everyone's expecting. Well, no, she's not confirmed, oh. but it's it's implied that she's probably going to be in. Well, it. yeah, because I think it's it's implied in Rebels that she and Ahsoka are pretty much partners. Yeah. So after uh, Endor. Yeah. So so basically, the, like, and not I, I guess I I maybe I'm trying I'm saying this the wrong way, but every, not every episode is going to be what everyone. Like it's not going to have its high points. They have to have these low points that set up the sh- that set up the world around it. Because Mandalorian has a big has has a has on a, has one of the biggest jobs to to fill or have have one of the biggest roles in the universe to fill. It's like not only is it going to launch a lot of these other characters' big sh- their shows, but it also has to build up the universe on how how did the first order appear? Because this is the show that Dave Filoni and uh, John Favreau said it's going to do that. Okay. So whether that's going to be in season three, but this has to also do that too. Yeah. It has to, if season three is going to be that series, the season to do that, um, this has to be that season to build up to that point too. So yeah. like people, and, and I think that's what a lot of people are saying. Like this was a boring, a little bit more of a boring episode, not what they expected, but that's because Mandalorian has a big, has a bigger job than just being an everyday well, yeah. Action packed show for you. Like it can't it can't deliver like if the show did like the first episode, we got Boba Fett. Second episode, it brings in Ahsoka. Third episode brings in the other characters. Then yeah. this fourth episode, oh, now we get that awesome fight with Moff Gideon fighting with the Darksaber. Then what's left? Like Exa- yeah, like, you're right. We, why would you instead of having all of the best flavors at you in, in the first bite, mm-hmm. why don't you let all those flavors be like 
brought out over the whole meal. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get all that great stuff. And the stuff. first season was good about that. Is and it? that's why I think I, I think the people will look pet like I, I think we all agreed that it was still a good episode. Oh, yeah. It was shot well. It was an interesting... There was interesting stuff that happened. We got to see uh, so, Ralph McQuarrie's old art I, get brought uh, into the you show. Kn- you know. Okay. Uh, I like, was going to try to see if you did, if you yeah, realized I mean, that's what that was. Yeah, I mean... A we, lot of people thought they were the spiders from Rebels. No, no. They're not. They're no, the similar, first, and those were based on that art. The first time I saw the mama spider, I was like, oh, I, I've seen that exact art piece. <laughs> like, Have you seen them side by side? Mm-hmm. The yeah. end, the end credits art. Yeah, I've seen it. Almost identical. It that's almost what I mean. Like, I, I, and that's the thing. Like what Those helps so- for me is the fact that I love this universe so much. I've seen like a lot of people's like art. I've seen a lot of the art. So when I see something that's like, I know what that. I know yeah. where they got that inspiration from. The Wampa replaced those, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I can't imagine how they would have done that effect in what seventy nine, eighty. So when did Empire come out? 82 it came out that long after no that's not right eight i think it's 80 uh empire strikes back release date yeah 1980 okay yeah it was may 21st yeah could you imagine what that spider would look like in 1980 (laughs) probably would have been stop motion probably the rancor uh, uh. probably i i uh i i also you know what's one thing i've been thinking about about the Mandalorian that I really like. Uh, and I also want to get to the, the baby Yoda, like eating all the eggs thing. There's a big <laughs> joke there, but also there's a chance that it gives more, more insight on his, uh, on his backstory. But, um, I, uh, what, how, I don't know how, I, never mind. I'll just go back to what <laughs> I was gonna say. I had a thumb, I had something, but I lost it trying to bring, I like up. how they never identified the frog lady species. No. She's just called Frog Lady. No. Um, um, like the subtitles say when she speaks, Frog Lady speaks frog. Yeah. <laughs> I I was wondering when the... Uh, I can't remember. Did they say... Did he just snore? I think he did, yeah. My cat's <laughs> snoring. Uh, <laughs> did... What's the planet that they're going to? What? what was did it? they say? Which planet was it? I can't remember what planet they They left called. Tatooine, if that helps. Yeah, I can't remember what the planet was that they said they were going to. I think it also started with a T. Um, maybe they didn't. Maybe that's still up for debate where they're going. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's, I don't. I, I feel like I because I feel like I would have known. Why but, does hyperspace ruin her eggs? I plot details. I mean, I guess. Uh, yeah, plot. I know that. <laughs> I don't know. I know that. Also, I, like, should, is she like? Is she not going to make more eggs? Like. Shouldn't she have like gone out to see her husband before she had a bunch of eggs? I think they're implying her father, her her husband's dead. They're not though. That's why she has to go there is so that, she, that her husband can fertilize the eggs. Maybe, maybe they're that old. Maybe maybe <laughs> they're at that age. Like this is the last no. shot. <laughs> like All right. maybe the eggs are taken. Care I know of, what you want to talk about the baby Yoda, <laughs> the baby Yoda eating all the eggs. How did she not notice? Did she notice? I said that too at the end of the episode. I I said to Robin, like, I feel like she would have noticed that more eggs were gone. Yeah. And how do you swing that as Baby Yoda not being a monster? You can't. (laughs) But you know what I think if if it's if it's a if it's one of those cases where he likes those eggs because he knows where they're from, I definitely think that Camino is gonna have a big portion of Baby Yoda's backstory. Because you remember the season one, the first guy, that guy that wanted to study Baby Yoda, not not the the client, but yeah. the other dude. He had a Camino. Oh, uh, pa- the younger guy. Yeah, he had a Camino patch on his on his, his mm. arm. So and like, okay, what does he want to know about it? So then, if Baby Yoda is eating like fish eggs, basically no. caviar, and he has like a, a an affiliate, like he likes them that much. Yeah, there's a chance. A lot of people are saying that there's a chance that that means like he's had that he's had them before, mm. which means. Where could he have gotten it? Well, there's only two planets. But, I mean, the, the same episode also showed he's kind of indiscriminate about where he gets his food from. Which yeah. is what kicks off the monster stuff. Well, that's what... Uh, but, again, because it's because he's still, like, an infant, he's still kind of like a baby. Yeah. And he still has that, uh, that infancy in his brain. Most babies will take objects and try to eat what... A, and oh, yeah. That looks enough. So what it could be is he saw those eggs, and he's just like, I like these things yeah. they're eggs and this looks to this i'm gonna go eat that maybe that's good too yeah. and i think the thing is like 
I also want to know why he's so hungry. Me too. What is why? He's a growing boy. Has he been doing this for 50 years? What's well, the thing? Have, like, you, have you seen the other thing that comes, has come out of this uh-uh. about Yoda? No. And Dagobah? He didn't go to Dagobah because there's a lot of force there. He went there because there's a lot to eat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> all, all that force ability, he has to, yeah. he has to eat something. Um, I was checking the time. Uh, I feel like since I, I made it part of the intro, we need to touch on this. Let's talk about the let's talk about the holiday special first. Well, since we're talking about Star Wars, might as well I mean. talk about yeah, the That yeah. looks fun. I'll be honest. Well, I feel like this is how the holiday special was meant to be. Wait, in a if la- you're listening to this, pause, go to the show notes, watch the trailer for uh Star Wars holiday special um trailer, and uh then come back to the show. You know what's really weird? All of the voices for like the new cast are not the Nah, they're like, not. Not none of them are the same people, but only one of them sounds a little bit like the person. It's Poe Dameron. Yeah, but, uh, Oscar I like they are tra- doing an Oscar Isaac impression. Um, yeah, the only people that the people they got were Anthony Daniels because he does everything. Um, Kelly Marie Tran. Uh, who else? There was a couple others who were who did do their roles that they are actually are. I don't know. What if they got Ewan McGregor to do Obi Wan? No, they didn't. They it's the same voice actor who did him in Clone Wars, though. I think, right? Mm-hmm. Same with Matt Lanter. Yeah, is doing um, Anakin the, slash Darth Vader. So there's something like like first of all, because it's a Lego thing, it seems like it's going to be funny. Yeah. This also gives me an idea of what the Lego Star Wars game is going to be, the Skywalker saga is yeah. going to be like, because they're not they allowed everyone to come back and just do voices. So they're not going like how they have been for all the Lego ones. Is like they're just taking clips from the movies. Mm-hmm. Now, like they're actually had all the people come and do voice acting yeah. for it. So if that's what they did with this, I think is I think this is going to be really funny. I think and it the is. game's going to be really funny. But I have a little worry about this. Yeah, and I don't know. Remember how we a while back we talked about the idea of like space travel and other worlds and other universes for Star Wars? Yeah. I think this is gonna have something to do with it. Right? Lego Star Wars stuff isn't that canon, though. Well, it's okay, kind of canon. But hear me out. It wouldn't take much for them to say this is also canon in the Star Wars universe. That all, all we're just seeing it from a different lens. But Ray did go back in time, and t- mm. so you know what I mean. Like, there's no. I think what they're doing with this is they're is this the, be, it being a Lego holiday special. Mm-hmm. Gives it that well. That's what I want from I'm, canon. I'm, but the thing is, like, I'm hoping it stays in there. But Disney is desperate to fix Star Wars yeah. for, in people's eyes. So I would. I don't I, think the holiday special is the way to do it. But at this point, like Disney's will, like Disney's proven they're willing to just throw anything at the wall yeah. and see what sticks. So I, you know, yeah. Also, all that stuff about the time travel, like it's never really been. Confirmed. You know, the best part about that. We trailer? just know they can do it. Yeah, through the Force doors or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know the best thing about that trailer? Hmm. There's three Obi Wans, so I guess they're Obi three now. <gasps> oh, did you steal that joke from someone? No, that your... <laughs> nope. That was all. That was all. That was all, Matt. That was very authentic. All right. Here's I also, the thing. That... I want to say something that also. Okay, do it. Because I'm watching. I have the trailer playing below me as we're talking, and uh, I don't like that they're doing. They're making all the jokes about the new trilogy. Like, they're making fun of the new trilogy that yeah. they made. Yeah. Like, they're like, yeah, make fun of, like, Kylo Ren with his shirt off. Like, <laughs> but you did that. Yeah. No, like, it's wait a weird. minute. Like, I get it. You, you're you you're able to laugh at your past, but you did that. Like, you got to also self, be self-aware enough to be like, hey, we kind of screwed up. Sorry, yeah. guys. I don't know. Maybe that's what it'll be. I'll give it a chance. Especially with it's on Disney+. Plus. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, what, the, well, what, the, what? November seventeenth. That's what. Okay. Wait, November seventeenth. That's, that's only next, six days that's from next, when we're recording. That's next week. Nice. <laughs> All right. It'll be we, fun. We'll review it. We'll yeah. review it and take a look at it. But and you know what's funny is I think by the time people listen to this, now, Mandalorian comes out on Fridays, right? Yes. Discovery comes out on Thursdays. Never mind. Yes. I was gonna say people might listen to this and have already seen episode three of Mandalorian. And we're sitting here looking like idiots because we've only seen two of them. What kind of pop culture nerds are we? Well, look, those people can 
shove it i guess yeah. like they this it's a pre-recorded show it's not like we do <laughs> we don't do everything live to the moment you're listening to wait it. has so, someone gotten upset at you about not catching something yes if have they really yes and i've already had i've had someone say hey i remember you, you your response that was one of like wait he's had this conversation before someone can <laughs> yeah so someone came up to me and be like hey so i looked it up because we were talking about Star Wars, we're talking about something Star Wars, as we always do, or Marvel or something <laughs> like that. And one of the dudes that we worked with like came up to me and said, "Like, so I, I listened to your episode. I say you were wrong about this. I'm like, oh, well, because this because it would have came out Thursday. They talked to me Tuesday, right? So a uh, like day before we were going to record the next one. The information that I had that I was wrong about got changed Monday." <laughs> But they came out to tell me about how I did wrong. Instead of just saying it was a good episode, by the way, instead of just saying good episode, I liked it, or I didn't like it, they had to come over out of their way to come over to me and tell me what I did wrong. And I was like, this is this now, is hold what, on. This is what it's going to be like having fans. You're but, calling them out. Someone who's listened to the show and may listen to this episode. Good. I can't wait to talk to them next week <laughs> again. <laughs> But they came. Ryan's they, looking for a fight. They came over to me and they were just like, just a heads up. The, the information got changed. It's this now. And I was like, oh, when did that happen? And they were like, oh, like yesterday or something. They came out with it. I was like, <laughs> my show's recorded last week. <laughs> it's like, if you would have listened to it Thursday, then you would have listened that it would have been recorded the next the yeah. day before that. So that's like five days. Yeah. Ago, and you're you're coming to tell me how I did it wrong. It's like, oh, sorry. Oh how about God. you tell me, call me next time you're going to listen to the episode, and I'll record it live right there, so yeah. we can all be in the same page, and you don't have to come over and have this stupid conversation yeah. with me. We need to get into this last thing. He's that probably I... not going to listen to it. Okay, that's fun. But if he did, I can't wait to hear from him. Okay, you're you're the best number one fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> before we get into this, though, I forgot to we forgot to mention it last episode, and we haven't mentioned it yet this episode. Zach's not dead. He's just had to work. He should be back in the near future. He's volunteering today. Is he? Yeah, he's vol- his text message. If you just give me a sec, you talk real quick while I look. I grab the the message. I mean, I know last week he had to work, and that was why we we had to record. He without said, him. "I have a buddy from out of town coming in tonight. <laughs> We're his only friends. Yeah, right. And I'm also operating Christmas child boxes. What does that mean? Because that can be taken." I guess I didn't read his message that much. Or his, or his. Only and I'm friends. also doing Operation Christmas Child Boxes. So what is that? Is that like and I'm sh- putting I, children I, in boxes for I, Christmas? Using good faith, uh, <laughs> guessing, I would say it's, they're probably like boxes that get given to children. <laughs> really? Do you presents? think they wrap them? Probably. I'm gonna go ha- go ahead and say that Zach so, right now is on the other side of Pittsburgh boxing children up for Christmas. <laughs> That's okay, we'll I'm go gonna, with that. I'm going to say that. I like that lore. He's not here to defend himself, so. He boxes children up to give to other children. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Little Timmy's looking for a friend. Here, Timmy. We got this you is, this. Meet George. He's your friend now. What a weird... Okay. He has to stay wait, with you. Wait, Lady and the Tramp, but instead of getting a dog for Christmas, they get a child for Christmas. Same movie in every other way. Just throwing that one out there. I don't start listing your problems because I know you already have many. I don't think I've I don't remember Lady and the Tramp. They get the dog for Christmas and then then they have a baby for real. And then they throw her out and the, the lovable street dog shows shows her how to jive or something. Wow, there's a, OK, I get it now. So like <laughs> <laughs> late, I didn't think this through at all before I said it. So so, so Lady your so Lady is the dog is a dog. that gets She gets thrown out. She's not. Um, she, no, so it, the family doesn't love her anymore. No, so? they they have a ch- they have a kid, and so they don't pay as much attention to her. And she's used to being paid attention to all the time. And she runs away. And then a uh, rat breaks into the kid's room, <clears throat> and uh, and the dog go defend defends the kid and chases the rat out. But when the parents get there, all it looks like is that the dog wreaked havoc in the room, and so they kick her outside because they're like, "Oh, you're we can't leave you around the kid." and so she has to sit in the doghouse, and she's this pampered dog who's used to being inside. And then the tramp, the basically, dog. You're, what you're trying to sell is if we replace that dog with a kid, you're saying these family went out and adopted a child, and then once they had a real baby, just <laughs> <threw it out. laughs> it's 
it's so much more messed up than <laughs> So then what? With the do- so then that spaghetti scene, does that mean the kid makes yeah. out with a dog? <laughs> well, a couple old dude, old Italian dudes are standing there singing to him. <laughs> wow, Italy's weird. <laughs> Italy's a weird place, man. Oh my god. I didn't think it through before I posited that scenario, and it got so much better than I hoped for. I think the most concerning part about that is the fact that what I said about Zach is out there boxing children up to give to other kids. You instantly changed it to like, what would happen if Lady the Tramp was replaced with a dog? <laughs> like, do you know how many steps of like mental loops you have to jump through? Do you want to hear my thought process on <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, I would like was to Was that boxing up children to give to other children for presents? Then my thought was, oh, people do that sometimes with pets. Wait, they did that in the movie Lady and the Tramp. What if Lady and the Tramp, but boy? So can I add a, can I add some, a loop in that okay. thought process? I like to think that you went and thought Zach is giving kids away to other kids. Oh, but Zach's putting them in a box. The lady and the tramp happened. But they ate they ate their spaghetti on a box. What if that box had a kid on it? What if lady was in the box instead of a kid? <laughs> the kid was the replace. What if that all of the lady? Pro- the, that's the thought. That's where I was hoping. That was. It's not that convoluted. Well, I'm just saying I added the convo. That's, where, that. that's that what I was sitting here as you're asking me that question, trying to figure out. What do we how call this movie the- we've created? <laughs> <laughs> Orphan of the Tramp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all they, they name of that. Like, <laughs> there Christmas. Oh, what you? What did you get? Oh, Orphan it's the an scamp. orphan. <laughs> What's your kid's name? Or- huh. They're walking him on a leash. What's your, what's your kid's name? Orphan. <laughs> orphan and the tramp. Or- <laughs> orphan and the scamp. Mm. The, that. Okay, wait. Oh, what's the? That what? was the name. Like they made a stupid vi- straight to video sequel of it. That's what they called the kid. Like Lady and the Tramp had a kid, and they called it Scamp, didn't they? Scamp's Adventure. Yeah. Yeah. So late. Why do I know that? <laughs> <laughs> Orphan, that I'm trying brain? to I'm trying to create the sequel. Orphan and the Tramp to uh, Wait, no. <laughs> hang on. I t- I don't know. I, I want to pop the brakes here because the se- if you want to make a sequel based on the actual sequel for it, <laughs> you're saying that this dog and this orphan kid had a baby dog. <laughs> Why can't orphans be girls? <laughs> I mean, yeah, keep that thought process in. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like this game anymore. Uh, Johnny Depp got fired from Warner Brothers. Mad Mickelson's replacing him. I'm gonna leave it at that. That's how we end the episode. You mentioned that just offhandedly. <laughs> That's how we're ending. We're not gonna explain it. Yep. Nope. Shows so over. Then, uh, so yeah, in theaters, 2022, uh, Lady and the Tramp, but Orphan. Orphan and the Tramp. That's how. You're, <laughs> is that what you're gonna title the episode? Orphan <laughs> the Tramp, Scamp's Big Adventure. <laughs> What would they call the kid? <laughs> they couldn't call it scam because that would be too that would be copyright infringement. Uh oh man, what's it called? Oh. Wait, hold on. No. <laughs> orphan, what if what? Orphan of the Tramp <laughs> Orphan of the Tramp 2 Adoptions Only Adoptions Adventures. The Adoptory Adventures. <laughs> Adoptor Adventures. They try to get their oh, man. horrifying man dog baby adopted. <laughs> no. What if? What if the, diary of the sequel of it is about them? They have a they have a dog child, um, but it's weird. The dog sounds like Billy Joel. The third movie is literally just Oliver and Company. You're building a weird Disney. <laughs> you're, building, you're building a weird Disney verse, and I don't like it. <laughs> this is the Disney megaverse. <laughs> the orphan the. OMCU. Ne- Nega Disney. The Orphan Movie Universe. <laughs> <laughs> the Orphan. The, well, oh, no, it would be the OCU. The, the OCU. Orphan Cinematic Universe. Yeah. <laughs> it all centers on this one orphan. What if, what if we take all these Disney movies and somehow these all, they're all like some random ca- Every dog character in it is a child of theirs. And they just had a bunch of dog children. <laughs> Is Balto? A- yeah, <laughs> Balto's in there. Instead Even of- though Balto, well, I think Balto is Miramax, so just like Disney adjacent. What would Balto be if it was just an orphan? What if Balto but man? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a naked dude running at the front of a pack so, of dogs. 
It's just some homeless man. Like instead of like they're getting dogs ready to go, and this other dude looks down an alleyway. And he just says, "That's the man's gonna get this medicine there." Yeah. <laughs> And he goes like, homeless man, this is your last chance. You need to save the day. He's like, okay, I'll do it. Hand like, it to me. And they just start strapping but like him to this, the... This naked, this naked man who's carrying medicine also uh, keeps making eyes at a sick girl's pet dog. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for some reason, there's another dog that wants to fight <laughs> And and wants to like, fight the homeless man because I'm gonna I'm gonna walk this sled in. So there's a weird oh, and there's a moment in the sea where the homeless man, a bunch of wolves Wait, come when over. Did you homeless, because <laughs> that's what I said. It's a homeless man. Okay. Instead of an orphan, uh, this homeless man is out in the middle of the cold, naked, while his owner, his new, his new uh, like sled man is is dying, and all the dogs are like, "What are we gonna do, homeless man?" And he howls at the moon, and a bunch of wolves show up. <laughs> And instead, what we'll do is it'll be also a bunch of other homeless men. And they're just, they just, but they're just covered in dog fur. Yeah. Because <laughs> they have made, they're like half dog, half humans. <laughs> and what will be is we'll all look back as one of them is the first human dog hybrid that came from Orphan and the I was, Tramp. I was going to go that do, is their I was going to do, I was going to do something lead. different. I was going to say. <laughs> What if there's a flashback in the in the penultimate moment of the movie when he's got to like power through it to get the medicine to Nome, Alaska, and we get a flashback and he is the orphan? Oh, like the homeless man grew up into a ho- oh, but no, the only way that she could have a kid is it would have to be a girl, so it's a homeless woman. Yeah. Okay. So this now it becomes rated R. Yeah. Because now you have to show nipple. Yeah. No, can't mm. have that. Hmm. This is a twisted universe we've made, and I love it. I, I want to like, explore it more. I just like the idea that there's just like a homeless man, and he just sees a bunch of wolves come out, and as he howls at them and they howl at him, he remembers a time when his when his dad was a dog licking him, and he's like, God, <laughs> oh, but this, and he's just this furry monstrosity of a human being. I, I, this, this universe we've created is incredible. And for some reason, there's someone in the background that thinks it's Bigfoot, and that'll be how we start Pocahontas. I love <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Pocahontas is uh is, is just the daughter of of the homeless man and she But is this like future Pocahontas? Yeah, it'll be like <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Uh, yeah, we got to stop this. Uh look for more <laughs> I'm I'm not going to let this whole this uh orphan cinematic universe thing go. I forgot Lady and the Tramp had a live action. Yeah, it did. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> if you want to see more from the show, you can follow us on... Oh, Fox and the Hound. We've got to replace the dog with a human. Cliffhanger. It's... We'll tell you more about... <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just the, the, the owner. It's just his kid that he turned into a hunting dog, but now it's a hunting <laughs> human. <laughs> and he'd be, he'd be friends of Fox, a neighborhood Fox. Yeah. <laughs> That is just his grandmother who owns the fox. <laughs> the reason her and the husband and the and the and the the kids owner fight is because the grandma is like, "This is inhumane to turn my grandson into a hunting dog." And the other dude's just like, "You're wrong. He is a hunting dog." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, if you guys want to hear, if you guys want to see more from us, you can go to uh, all the social media, pop culture unboxing. You can follow me on Twitter. Now you have Matt, two. You Matt realize Rossbio. you have two clips to make ads for now. Us yeah. talking about turning an orphan into <laughs> us <laughs> making fun of Zach or or making Zach a monster. And what was the last? I one? like how this whole thing just came from a text from Zach. Just not being here. It's incredible. Zach, Brian, where, they, they can you can find me on Twitter, Matt Ross Vio, uh, Twitch and YouTube, Jan Jingle. Ryan, Red, where can they find you? Red Steak Ryan and everywhere. Yep. Tell your friends about us. It's been great. Thanks for listening. Bye. I love you. Bye.